Hey everybody, it's Sean. I'm back at Proust for an Animal Facts Day, and today I have a very special friend named Wilhelm with me. I keep looking down because I'm holding him in my hand, and I have to make sure he doesn't get away from me, because he is being a little squirrely. But, Wilhelm is an emperor scorpion. Now, emperor scorpions are found in tropical areas in West Africa. Now, I know some of you are thinking, why would I let a scorpion be crawling on me? They might possibly sting me or kill me or something. That's not really true. Emperor scorpions are actually known for being pretty docile, although Wilhelm here has always been really wound up, but I'm gonna have him come out and help us anyways. Uh, you'll notice he has very, very large pinchers or claws, however you wanna say it at the front. And then his telson back here, which is this whole appendage with a stinger on it, not a tail, called a telson, is actually attached to his body. It's not a separate thing. When scorpions tend to have larger claws and smaller telsons, it means that the claws are going to be one of the main defense mechanisms of them. That their venom is gonna be very mild, so if you did sting me right now, it'd be similar to like a bee sting. It's not gonna kill me at all. I don't have um, allergic reactions to st um, bee stings or anything like that, so I wanna go into anaphylactic shock. Uh, but the pinchers might hurt, he'll hang on. They aren't really controlled by muscle, they're kind of pneumatic in a way where they just hold on, they can just hang on as long as they want to. Now, he's got these really cool feathery appendages on the back sides of uh, his front legs, they're called pectins, which are these feathery like things, they almost look like feather dusters, and they actually detect movement and different things along the ground. Uh, this helps him detect danger. It also helps him look for food because a little scorpion like this is going to be searching for things like crickets and roaches and maybe even some small earthworms to eat. Now, I mentioned he's kind of small and that's because he's still a juvenile. This is actually the largest species of scorpion in the world when they get full grown. Not the longest, but the largest, the most heavy bodied. Um, usually they can get about that wide, so I'd say two to three inches wide. Uh, body length is gonna be somewhere around like five or six inches long. And then with their telson, they can actually go upwards of about 10 inches long. A lot of times they're dark black or even like a little bit of green. And one of the coolest things with these scorpions and some other species as well, is that if you put a black light over them, they glow fluorescent green underneath that black light. We're still not quite sure why they do that. Um, it could be a sensory thing. It could be that even though with limited vision, they might be able to see one another that way because they are nocturnal. We really don't know, but it is kind of a cool feature. Now he's finally kind of calm, which means I can kind of hold him up to the camera there. You can see he's still holding at least one claw open. Um, this is still because he's a little bit on defense, but he's relaxed that telson down. He's actually relaxed his body down. So this lets me know that he's a little bit calmer and he's okay with me handling them. Now, you have to be really, really careful when handling these guys, and it's not because of them possibly stinging you, which they could do. Mainly, it's because you don't want to drop them and have something bad happen to them. They have an exoskeleton, just like many other arachnids, insects, bugs, however you want to go at or which classification. But that means that they just have a hard outer shell. So we have bone structure holding everything together. They have an outer structure, which is what the exoskeleton is, and it holds everything in. If that exoskeleton were to break or get punctured, all their body fluid and everything just kind of falls out of them. They don't have veins or anything like that to be pumping blood. It's just a, a big circular system with the heart going. And so when there's a hole in it, it's a lot like if you were to puncture a hole in a hose that was turned on full blast and all the water starts spouting out. So the same thing actually happens to these guys. So we have to be very, very careful not to hurt them. You'll see as he starts trying to explore, I just kind of move my hands out in front of him and let him keep walking. I'm not gonna like try to stop him from walking or doing his thing. He just wants to explore, see what's going on. He's gonna use those pectins I talked about to kind of detect what's going on in my hand. I think he's finally started to realize that I'm not going to hurt him at all. Um, but also, it's really warm in this room, and the warmer it gets, the higher my body temperature goes, which he can detect, which also makes me sweat more, which puts out different types of pheromones and everything else. So these are things that arachnids can detect with the special hairs that they have on them. So tarantulas have special hairs across their arms. He has special hairs across his claws along with those pectins. He can detect all these things happening to me right now. So that can sometimes put him a little bit on edge. Now one of the coolest things about him with being able to detect that heat and everything is actually his ability to uh, not necessarily regulate temperature but to withstand temperatures. 
these guys can actually go blistering heat, like triple digit heat, and then they can also withstand going below freezing temperatures. Now, they don't necessarily freeze to death or bake to death, they just go into rocks and crevices and things like that and hide out where the temperature is gonna be more stable. But for short periods of time, they can handle those very varying temperatures. So, he's a very, very cool scorpion. I think they're very misunderstood creatures. I know they creep some people out. But I always tell everybody that I teach to, the more we learn about an animal and start to understand them, the less we have to be afraid of them. So. Hopefully you guys are a little bit less afraid of scorpions. So, all right, have a good night.